Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. And today, I'm bringing bringing back wrestling videos, but not universe mode. Uh, today, I'm doing my first ever non-universe mode video for wrestling. And it's going to be my top ten wrestlers of all time. So I hope you're all doing well today. Um, it's going to be difficult because there's so many great wrestlers, and they're all put onto this list of ten. Um, Horrible mentions, I'll mention them before I mention my number one, but yeah, I think we should get right into this, but before we do, please make sure to like, share and subscribe for more content like this, and also some updates on my fan film, The Force Unleashed. So coming in at number 10, is Brock Lesnar. Now, I know some of you are like, oh, why Lesnar's a part time, he only comes when he wants to. Have you seen the guy wrestle? I mean, yes, he's not a wrestling, he's not a WWE boss at time, but when he is, you know shit's gonna get good. I mean, there's a. I mean, I call him the Survivor, Spirit, uh, Survivor Series specialist. I mean, so what matches that last couple of years is five series. Lesnar, Styles, Lesnar, Bryant, and Lesnar, Mysterio. All three were incredible. And no one out there could deny these were some of Lesnar's best matches. His first run in 2002 to 2004 was good as well. He just rose through the roof like a motherfucker. And of course... His biggest asset, his client Paul Heyman, who I consider to be one of the best talkers in wrestling of all time. And just cause Heyman did the talking for less than ninety five percent of the time, when he did talk, you know he was pissed and you know he was gonna do something. I mean in twenty fifteen Fort Royal Rumble, he snatched the mic off Heyman. And he literally said to Reigns, well, uh, Rollins, get your ass out here. And he was going to fucking implode on everyone. And, yeah, I just think Lesnar is a very exciting character to see in wrestling. And obviously, because we haven't seen him since WrestleMania 36, it's been a shame. And... Well, if see back, I was hoping for him against Lashley at SummerSlam, but we're not getting that, so... I mean, Lashley gets Goldberg, it could lead to Lesnar, prove that Lashley and Lesnar are both just different breeds of human. Like, they're powerful enough to beat Goldberg, who has taken out the uh, recently released Bray Wyatt, uh, Drew McIntyre, Actually, less than ever beaten McIntyre, so. But, my number 10, Brock Lesnar. My number 9 is one of the most creative minds in wrestling history. It is Y2J Baby, Chris Jericho. Now, he falls under a uh, similar ca category to Undertaker, where he didn't need a world title to prove how amazing he is. I. I consider Jericho to be the top three most creative people in wrestling history. Him, Undertaker, and a certain someone who we'll be seeing later on in the list. Jericho found a way to keep his character interesting and exciting for over 30 years. And now he's in AEW, he's having a great storyline with MJF. And I can't see, wait to see where that goes. I mean, as he kept saying in WWE before, he beat Stone Cold and The Rock in the same night to become the first ever undisputed world champion. I mean, I don't, Jericho's had some amazing characters like, uh, I mean, he's had The List. He's had uh, his character from 28. 2008 to 2012, that was a sick time for him. Especially his matches with Shawn Michaels, Undertaker, John Cena. No, wait, his match against Cena was in 2006, so. Yeah, but Jericho's had some amazing matches. 
his most recent feud uh, in WWE. Um, Kevin Owens for US title. Jesus. It's been that long. It's been three years since we've seen Jericho in it, uh, WWE. Jesus. But anyways, yeah, he's had some great matches to get with some of the biggest legends in wrestling. Triple H, Shawn Michaels, Undertaker, Cena, Rock, Austin. And he is so creative and so so gifted in his ideas and that's why he's number 9 and not out of the top 10 so Chris Jericho is my number 9 my number 8 is the man who has now got the title for the greatest return in wrestling history Adam Copeland also known as Edge now this man went through shit <laughs> He's, in my opinion, if he stayed heel throughout his entire career, he would be the greatest heel of all time. But he didn't. I mean, look at the shit he did. He slapped John Cena's dad. He had a feud with Matt Hardy over Lita, which was actually a real-life thing. He had sex with Lita on Raw Live. He cashed in on John Cena after his Elimination Chamber match. I mean, this guy in layman's terms, was a cunt. <laughs> Back in, the, in them days, he was a cunt. And... I despised him. When I saw Edge versus Cena, which is Edge's greatest rivalry, by the way, it's just... I did not want to see Edge get anything over Cena. Because I was a massive Cena fan. Because young child, obviously. And when Edge retired in 2011, I was disappointed and I really wanted to see him continue wrestling. But if he hadn't retired, we wouldn't have seen one of the greatest returns in history at the 2020 Royal Rumble when you hear Metalingus play at the number 21 spot. Oh my god. I watched it half an hour ago and shivers went through my spine. Just stuff like that is what makes wrestling, wrestling, you know what I mean? And nowadays with Edge against Seth Rollins at SummerSlam, oh my god. They are going to implode. They are going to burst the roof off. And even at his age now, Edge can perform to an elite level still. On the levels of Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, Jimmy, Jimmy and Jey Uso, um... Adam Cole, those kind of people, he can still perform at that level, and because of that, he's my number eight. So number eight, the rated R superstar, Edge. Now number seven, in my opinion, probably one of the most underrated wrestlers of all time. Now you can comment about that in the comments below and agree or disagree with me on this one. But I've got the game, the King of Kings, the Cerebral Assassin, Triple H. Now, this man, <laughs> the CEO of WWE, the leader of NXT, has... He's just so extraordinary. 14 world titles. Um, his Reign of Terror in 2002... Through 2004, that era. Whilst most people look back on that as like, oh, Triple H was pushed to the moon. He was steroids all over the place and shit like that. I just... I don't know. Triple H... He's always been a soft spot in, for me. Um, I think the first ever match I saw of Triple H was his one against uh, Daniel Bryan. WrestleMania 30. Which was the first time I ever watched wrestling, I think. WrestleMania 30, so... But, I mean, I've looked back at his uh, history and some of the matches he has had are impeccable. Him and Shawn Michaels, whilst they don't work the best together against each other in the ring, them two as D-Generation X, just them two with China, was different gravy. Like, back in 1996, 1997, strip poker on live TV. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> And then after that, I mean, in 2002, when he came back from his 
quad injury, like thigh. I know we're doing this on good old wrestling tomorrow, WrestleMania, where he faces Chris Jericho. But just some of the stuff that he did, or where well, well, this is today. So, but some of the stuff that he's done as a wrestler have gone really underappreciated. And even as the leader of NXT, people people praise him a lot for being leader of NXT and knowing what he's doing. But I feel like they're starting to praise him more as a managerial role instead of the great superstar and wrestler he is. And I still think Triple H is one of the most technically gifted wrestlers ever. I mean, I, only, I think The Undertaker and Randy Orton just beat him. And Shawn Michaels, you could debate, is more technically gifted than Triple H in the ring. But we'll see later on uh, down the road with this. But Triple H is my number seven. And the most underrated wrestler of all time, in my opinion. So, move on to number six. Before I continue with number six, sorry about that. That was fucking cringe. But my number six has recently returned and will be facing the tribal chief. Roman Reigns at SummerSlam. It is the leader of the Sea Nation, John Cena. Now, Cena has had a mixed history with the crowd. Like, when he held the fort down as a wrestler from 2006 to 2016, you could even maybe say 11 years from into 2017. Obviously, that's up for debate. But he decides to take time off in 2017, but he'll still WWE champion then. So, it's up for the uh, up for debate. But Cena, especially when I was a kid watching him, he was my favorite wrestler. Him and The Rock, to be honest, them two were just my favorite, and even The Undertaker back then. Um, but them what just I don't know. Cena definitely had a bit of an impression on me that. I mean, I followed him throughout his entire career now. I mean, from him interrupting Kurt Angle when Kurt Angle called someone out and he said ruthless aggression, from then to now where he signed a contract against Roman Reigns for SummerSlam. All the bits in between are what make John Cena so great. Now, whilst technically as a wrestler, he may not be as elite as someone like Edge, Triple H, Randy Orton. His charisma and his mic skills and the way he portrayed himself was so great. Uh, it's on the levels of The Rock as the character that he has created and become. And especially as a child, like, six, seven-year-old me watching Cena on the TV, whilst Raw in 2011, 2012 was okay in 2011, but in 2012 it declined massively. It's just... Cena was someone who you'd watch consistently because you know he's the main guy in wrestling. He was holding this motherfucker 85% of the time. But... Even without the title, Cena's still great. I mean, 16 time world champion, 5 time US champion, 4 time tag champion, Mr. Money of the Bank, 2 time Royal Rumble winner. And just that collection. Like, when Cena retires, that'll be the last time a wrestling megastar would be created. Even currently, John Cena is the last megastar in wrestling. Roman Reigns is not at that level yet. But by the end of his career, who knows? He could be. And especially now when he came back at Money in the Bank, I just had those feelings again. Like I had as a child towards Cena. Just, I don't know, he just hit something in everyone that I don't think a lot of people have. I mean, The Rock and Undertaker definitely have. I mean, just... When you say the name John Cena, you know exactly what they're talking about. When you say the name of The Rock, you know what they're talking about. When you say the name of The Undertaker, you know what they're talking about. And that's what makes Cena so great, is that he's very identifiable, unique, and just a great character. Which is why I put him at number six. 
Now coming in at number five, we have the most, what well, we have the electrifying one, the great one. The most electrifying man in sports entertainment, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I mean, it, it's The Rock, what can you say? Uh, probably the greatest promo person in wrestling history, which is always up for debate, but his character, his charisma, has always been unmatched as a wrestler. And no one has done that since. I mean, Stone Cold's got close to his charisma. Excuse me. But you never really see someone with the recognisability and just the unbounded support as Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Because when you hear that theme music go, everywhere in the building, no matter who's in the ring, you could have The Undertaker in the ring. But somehow, The Rock is the more popular one and he will be the good guy because he's the people's champ. And then take a wall like the heel because it's the rock you can't stop him he's just he'll never be healed because of his connection with the fans and especially because of his Hollywood style he will never be a heel again and just because of how recognisable he is how popular he is no one will ever be able to surpass a rock in popularity Yes, in my opinion, I think The Rock is the most popular wrestler of all time. And that is well backed up by the fact that he has branched off into Hollywood. And even did some business, entrepreneurship. Like, he's branched off in so many directions. And it all starts to pull back in to WWE. And the way, like, when he returns, which I'm going to say Survivor Series... Come back to this video after the Survivor Series and you'll see that I am right. You'll see that people from Hollywood who have never watched wrestling, you'll see the business people I went with who have never watched wrestling will start to slowly go back into WWE to see what their client or what their favourite wrestler is doing. And because The Rock will bring in viewers, I mean, you'll probably bring in like one and a half to two million viewers. That will definitely, The Rock will definitely bring wrestling back to a state where it's projected at like 3, 4 million viewers. Because him, Cena, Goldberg, and some other people which they haven't thrown in our faces yet, will be around at the same time. While Cena may have gone back to Hollywood after SummerSlam, Goldberg may not be here after SummerSlam. But because... When you replace them two with the almighty, the great one, the rock, he, Dwayne can account. I mean, if you bring Shawn Michaels, John Cena and Stone Cold back, if you take away all three of those and put in the rock, he will still get more uh, viewership than these three. Because of how popular, recognisable, charismatic and how great he is. So, Dwayne The Rock Johnson is at number five. Now, coming in at number four. It's the man who's gonna whip your candy ass. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Now, as a wrestling personality, Stone Cold is more recognisable. Whilst The Rock is more popular because of his other branched out areas unlike Stone Cold who's stuck with wrestling. He's the most recognisable character from wrestling and that is not a bad thing. I mean even nowadays when someone says something you hear the crowd go what? Because of Stone Cold because of his old thing of when everyone says something you go what? What? And that's Stone Cold. I mean, he had the most iconic finisher of all time, the Stunner. And his rivalry against the greatest villain in wrestling history, Vince McMahon, is always immortalised because it's like Stone Cold is beating up the guy in wrestling. No matter who you put with the world title, 
Vince McMahon will always be the one in wrestling. Ever since 1980, Vince McMahon has always been the one constant. He is the one that everything circulates around. Whilst no one likes to admit it, and not a lot of people want it to be nowadays, he is the one that's been there the entire time. And when Stone Cold feuded him, he became not one of these people from the outside, he came here and made the most iconic wrestling feud of all time. Yeah, sue me. But, is it just the feuds that made Stone Cold iconic? And it's, is it just his catchphrases like, What? I'll whip your candy ass. No, your candy ass. I'll give you a can of whoop ass. No, it's, I mean, throwing beers in the ring. Have you ever seen a wrestler who has a guy at ringside to throw him eight beers? And then he drinks it with someone in the ring. Just. No, nothing. And don't take that sexually. But Stone Cold is the most recognisable wrestler of all time. You might say Hulk Hogan, but fuck Hulk Hogan. He can die in a ditch. Um, but. Yeah, Stone Cold is iconic with everything he does. Anything he does in wrestling has become iconic. His catchphrases, his finisher. I mean, controversially, it's Lufes Press. Whilst it's not a great wrestling move, it's become iconic because when you see someone do it, you always think that's Stone Cold. And also his theme song. When you hear the glass shatter, you know someone's about to get their ass whooped. But, Stone Cold Steve Austin, number four. Coming in at number three, we have got the Heartbreak Kid. The best technical wrestler of all time, Shawn Michaels. Now, this man has had some of the best matches in wrestling history. Him against Undertaker in WrestleMania 25 and 26. Him against Triple H. Him against Ric Flair. Has he ever faced Edge? Yeah, he has. It's DX. But he's never faced a one-on-one. -on -one. Has he? I can't remember, because... I don't remember much from the rated RKO versus DX feud. Uh, all I can remember is when Edge and Orton uh, united to go against. Anyways, if they haven't, dream match me. But... Shawn Michaels is so great. Whilst he's not the best talker in the world, he makes for up for it in technical wrestling. His wrestling skills are on par with no one because he is always that level above everyone. I mean, his match against Vince McMahon, that match at WrestleMania 22? Or 23. What are the two? In a street fight. Decent match. If there's anyone else that weren't Shawn Michaels, I mean, if it was Vince McMahon vs. Stone Cold, then maybe it would be better, but besides, that's just because of feud, but that's besides the problem. Shawn Michaels is the most consistent and great wrestler that has ever been put in the ring. Not promo style technical wrestling style. His wrestling is the best ever. And even his character's great. The Heartbreak Kid. The Show Stabber. Mr. Wrestlemania. He had the first ever ladder match with Razor Ramon? Yeah, Razor Ramon. And ever since then, on the trajectory. Like I said with Triple H, DX. That was probably the well DX is probably the greatest group of all time, but Shawn Michaels and Triple H was just so sick back in 1996, 1997, that time. I'm not gonna talk about Shawn Michaels for NWO because that was just a dumpster fire. And also his return match against the Brothers of Destruction. At Super Showdown. No, it was Crowd Jewel. I mean, 
you should have left him retired. Unless he was going to face someone like AJ Styles. There's just no need, which is why he's got lower down on my list. That return in 2018. Yeah, 2018, because Reigns was out for leukemia. Yeah. 2018, he should not return. If he didn't return in 2018, he will probably be above the number two. Which we'll get on to right now. But, Shawn Michaels is number three. Coming in at number two is the legend killer, the apex predator, the viper, Randy Orton. Now... As Triple H said, they'd put the pressure on this kid and he'll either turn to dust or become a diamond. And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, he has become one of the most prized diamonds in wrestling history. The RKO, the most iconic wrestling move of all time in the general public. I mean, there's memes about it everywhere. I mean, the RKO is so sick. You can do it at any time and it will pop. I mean, some of his greatest ones will name him off. His against Seth Rollins at WrestleMania 31. That was great. His against Evan Bourne on Raw in 2009. Great. His against Christian in 2011 at SummerSlam. Onto the stairs. That was great. And that's not just it. Whilst people think Randy Orton's wrestling style right now is a bit old school and too sluggish you don't see that anymore you need a bit of old school in wrestling because that's what saved wrestling old school stuff and Randy Orton has never changed his since he had the RKO he has never changed his moveset drastically he's stuck to it that's why it's so iconic because he's used it in ways that no one else would I mean if I gave it to John Cena I don't think he'd He'd let someone try and curb stomp them and then RKO them out of nowhere from like 10 15 feet high? No. And Randy Orton is pose, you know, the. That pose, I I'll, said I'll do it well, but you get the point. That's iconic as well. And just his theme songs, his two theme songs, Burning My Light and Voices in My Head are great and obviously he's not number one but he is very close we'll see at the end of Randy Orton's career we will reevaluate 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 the list sorry I had a bit of a stroke but for right now because he hasn't finished his career we cannot be for certain if he is number one. Because he could still have another feud, a great feud left in him. Maybe against Black Riddle? Probably unlikely. Bobby Lashley? Could be. Keith Lee? Don't see that working unless uh, Spirit Bomb gets out of it. RKO when it comes down. That could be a great one. Um, him against Adam Cole, him against Master Champa. All these views that he has left before he retires are always up there. But at the end of his career, we'll see if he's number one or number two. But let's get into the number one and the honourable mentions. So, the honourable mentions, I have three. And the first one, may I shock you, Eddie Guerrero. Eddie Guerrero is probably the most charismatic wrestler in the business. As a face, he was great. He would be able to lure the audience into his store. As a heel, he was a dickhead who tried to steal Rey Mysterio's son. That's all you need to say. He is great as a face and a heel. Preferably, I prefer him as a face. He's one of the only people that I prefer as a face. Him, Undertaker, Drew McIntyre, John Cena, The Rock. They're the only five I can think of right now that I prefer as a face. 
and just a couple of weeks ago when I saw the tweets about him being a B plus player I just I was thinking are you even a wrestling fan because you have not looked at every category that you can like his wrestling skills were off the charts I mean him and Brock Lesnar uh, no way out too fast and three was great I mean, it was his first world title and then at the end of that Wrestlemania where it's with his friend you know he who shall not be named but I will name him Chris Benoit world title and WWE title side by side their dream and yeah Eddie Guerrero is a great talent and I know they said he wouldn't be as popular if he weren't dead but he would still be iconic and I think he could be more popular if he wasn't I mean he was in the prime of his career a bit like Ayrton Senna but he'll take it from us before he could fulfill the prime before he could show us his prime before he could unleash his prime and we never got to see it so my other honourable mention is the greatest luchador of all time Rey Mysterio and I chose him because he is the ultimate underdog he had always been and that's what's making great because I was always the underdog for me because I just get bullied on at school year after year after year and see someone like Rey Mysterio a kid who's like five foot four five foot five taking on someone like The Undertaker who is six foot ten six foot eleven not seven foot you WWE bastards and they seem to take someone on like the big show who's also seven foot not seven foot two you fucking and it's just him taking on these big guys and just getting it over and over and just always persevering that is something you can always look up to as a fan and his high flying skills make him the greatest lunch star of all time and an honourable mention on this list and so I can say the final one might be controversial that he's not in the top 10 but I've gone with CM Punk now this guy whilst I never enjoyed him during his time in wrestling because I got into wrestling at Wrestlemania 30 so I didn't really I was a bit of an amateur wrestling fan until WrestleMania 30 and then I saw Daniel Bryan win and then whoosh but CM Punk when I watched the summer of Punk 2011 that was the first we ever watched CM Punk because I asked one of my mates why should I start with CM Punk that here he is this great talker this great wrestler but I've never seen anything of it on him because he had left WWE at the 2040 Royal Rumble before WrestleMania 30 so I'd never really seen much of his stuff so it said the summer of punk and I watched it and to be honest I enjoyed the summer of punk whilst his wrestling matches weren't the greatest I mean his match against Cena at Money in the Bank I don't consider it to be a great match I consider it on the levels of Stone Cold well uh, Rock versus Hogan where the match was only great because of the fans and because of the crowd the wrestling weren't that great there was a couple of botches a couple of mistakes but the crowd make it made it so much better and he just hooked the fans and obviously you got to consider one of the greatest promos of all time the pipe bot CM Punk going off the hook going off the edge and just saying shit like the company will be better when Vince McMahon's dead but maybe it won't because it'll be passed on to his deluded uh, son-in-law and his stupid wife shit like this CM Punk the voice of the voiceless the best in the world and shit like that is why he's probably the most loved wrestler currently I mean even today in arenas you want to piss off Vince McMahon or Stephanie McMahon or if he thinks of his boring 
just chant C M Polk. C M Polk. And obviously we've heard the rumours that he's returning to well he's going to AEW and he may be fighting someone like Darby Allen, Kenny Omega, Adam Page, Christian, that could be a good one, Christian Cage, Cody stuff like that. CM Punk the gr my fourth greatest talker in wrestling and even when he was in ECW with Paul Heyman he was still a great wrestler and when him and Paul Heyman were, well, uh, were put together as a wrestling duo because Heyman was meant to be offered till uh, Summer well he defeated Triple H uh, Brock Lesnar defeated Triple H at SummerSlam and then they'll meant to come back in like February time. Um, if you haven't seen this, there's this interview of Paul Heyman on Inside the Ropes. I'll put a link in the description for it so you can see what I'm talking about. But he, Heyman and Lesnar weren't supposed to return until February. And the contract that Heyman had was that he'd only work with Brock, no one else, just Brock. But then this McMahon called him up and said, how do I like to work with uh, CM Punk? And Heyman didn't even have to say it and said, fuck yeah. I mean, CM Punk is just. He's just a great personality in wrestling. He is. It's like. I'm trying to think of the perfect. Uh, Youth of Disappear. Or oh, similar. I'm not a fault. Uh, I can't think, but. We'll get up to the number one now. But my three honorable mentions Eddie Guerrero, Rey Mysterio, and CM Punk. Now, coming in at the number one spot. The greatest creation in all of WWE. The Dead Man. The Phenom. The American Badass for a little time. The Undertaker. This dude was wrestling for 30 years straight. He wrestled a match with a broken rib. Two broken ribs, actually. This dude is the most dedicated wrestler I have ever seen. No one on his level. He is the greatest character in wrestling. He may not be the greatest wrestler in wrestling. I'm like, that goes to Shawn Michaels, but his character work, his dedication, his creative mind, there has never been anything like it. He's the greatest creative mind in wrestling history, in sports entertainment history. You've never seen someone like The Undertaker. You have never experienced someone like The Undertaker. And for the kids who are growing up in the next 10 to 15 years with wrestling as a young child will never be able to be the ones to experience or like see The Undertaker live action. He may come back for a couple of promos every now and then, but The Undertaker is just so great and his character work he made himself relevant in wrestling for 30 years that is how great he is and I, I have not even mentioned the greatest streak in all of wrestling in, in all of sports nearly The Undertaker's undefeated streak at Wrestlemania 21 straight years as an active competitor Beating the likes of Jimmy Snooker, Ric Flair, Randy Orton, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, Batista, Edge, Kane. Some of these people he's beaten at WrestleMania, that streak alone makes him a great wrestler, makes him a great character. And every time WrestleMania rolled around before, last, before his retirement as Survivor Series in 2020, you would think 
who is going to challenge for the Undertaker's undefeated streak? And that would be one of the main things that was guaranteed, but it's no longer guaranteed. Obviously, his streak was broken by the number 10 spot, Brock Lesnar. But Brock should not have broken that streak. In my opinion. I think either Randy Orton, Roman Reigns... It's a slightly controversial one. Or even Seth Rollins. Or Edge at WrestleMania 24. Those four should have been the ones to break the streak. If Undertaker was still on his streak today, if we cancelled out Lesnar and Reigns' victories over him, if Undertaker was still wrestling today, WrestleMania 38 rolling round, Roman Reigns, if he beat the Undertaker then, he would have been the next wrestling megastar. Randy Orton, nowadays, if he beat the Undertaker, wouldn't have made much sense. Randy Orton is a legend killer. If he beat The Undertaker, that streak, and that kid, that 25 year old, if he beat The Undertaker, imagine the implement implementations and the expectations of the, of the legend killer after that. That is the ultimate legend swipe. The, the ultimate takedown. Edge at WrestleMania 24, Edge did not want to do it. He was meant to do it, but until, until he was meant to do it, but he changed Vince's mind on the day of WrestleMania 24. Cena, as a young kid, like 2007, Cena, when he was all god mode, if he beat Undertaker then, and they turned him heel, that could have been the greatest storyline in wrestling. But we'll never get to see that, and. The Undertaker is number one, and I, if I wanted the next generation to see one of these ten wrestlers, it would be The Undertaker, because he is so good in the ring, he is such a great character, and I feel sorry for people that won't be able to experience him. But, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. I know I rambled on a bit for 42 minutes. But, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Hope you all have a wonderful day or night, wherever you are. And remember, the Force will be with you. Always. Take care, guys. Peace.